Today I want to cover aspects of random number generation um, and I go a little bit into data visualization. We look at um, a favorite casino gambling strategy, doubling your bets after losing. And this works very well if you bet on red, black um, or any other 55 bets. Now these strategies are sometimes called martingale strategies or reverse martingale strategies, but they come with a little twist, so they tend to then change sides after losing. As a stats person, we already know that whether um, the previous um, spin was odd or even, it doesn't tell you anything about the future. Yeah, because of independence of events. So changing your bets um, after losing um, makes no difference. The important thing is you have to double your bet after losing and you keep playing the same bet. So what we do now is we, we want to write a Python code that does the betting for us and we want to simulate what happens after hundreds or thousands of bets. So put differently, can we win against a casino? What does it take? We will also use um, now for the first time matplotlib.pyplot. It's quite a nice um, name. And this is for data visualization. It's one of many packages. We need random numbers. We need actually to be precise. We need some random integers. And as we play roulette, um, we have to include um, a zero. And um, you will know the zero means the bank, the casino wins um, up to 36. It refers to MNP, so this is for NumPy, and then we have the random module. The um, lower number is inclusive, uh, the higher number is exclusive, so we have to go up to 37. Let's think for a second what kind of parameters do we need. We can just maybe just um, write this down, if I can write. Let me have some more coffee, I need some more coffee. This is cup number 8 today. But it's fine. I'm always balanced. It's important um, as part of a balanced diet. Um, anyway, if you could, you have to have coffee. Better. We have to think about um, how many games do we play. We need um, initial money. We have to think about our initial bet. So after we spin the wheel, we have to decide do we win, do we lose. Let's assume if it's even, we, um, we win, otherwise we lose. If um, spin modulo 2 is equal to equal to 0. We have to be careful here because um, 0 would be also even, but of course we don't win. We have to exclude the case that spin should not be equal to zero. What happens um, if we win? We make money and we make money according to our bet. So when we start the game, our bet um, is simply equal to our initial bet. And later we of course adjust our bet. So if we win, we would get money. So we put our money there um, plus equal to the bet we have. So let's do an else statement. So if we lose, well, in this case, we lose the money. So minus equal to bet. But then we double the bet. So how do we double? We just write bet and we two multiply equal to two. Now there's one thing to, to note here. If we win on a higher bet, we have to move it back to the initial bet. Otherwise it keeps going bigger and bigger and we certainly will run out of money. So we need another line here where we just um, set the bet back to the initial bet. We have to keep going. So it would be useful to actually have this here in a while loop. That's the obvious thing to do do um, and just keep going until we are running out of money. To be precise, actually we need enough money to be able to bet and then we just move all of that inside. Yeah, now you notice that um, the variable bet would be now unidentified. The thing is when we run to line 16, um, at this point, Python doesn't know what bet is. Bet is, um, is happening is defined later, so we have to actually start this earlier and specify bet and then we go into it and then we update the bet accordingly. So we don't need this line. So we can tidy up this a bit. So we keep going and we keep betting. Yeah. So let me just um, finish that and, and, and run this for some time. And um, that's my current money 56 because the bet is going insane. Yeah. You see that. So at one point you, you might not be able to afford it. And then of course you're 
game stops. So that, that seems to be promising, but of course it would be nice to see actually what happens to my position. Um, let's start a position vector. I just specify here position and I use the numpy package. I do it first all in zeros. Um, and I go up to games plus one. So I, I keep running um, up to 100 games. Um, and uh, when we do the, uh, this bet is equal to initial bet and we can start with the initial position. So indexing at zero, where we start with our current money position. So here below there we can do a position update. I need somehow an index position for that and we keep updating with money. So the index position needs to be updated. Um, so we need to introduce that earlier. So let me just do that. Um, I start with index position um, zero in this case and then I can keep adding one to it. So we spin and then we increase our index position by plus equal to one. So this will get it up to one, two, three, and so on. Um, and then we do and re do a replace here. We will, um, of course, note in a minute that we will run into a little trouble here. Let's just run this. It's always good anyway to make mistakes and you see what happens and we try to work on this. Um, at 45, we can't afford the bet of 64, so we are out of money. So it's not a great strategy. The next thing which would be nice to do now is actually to visualize this position. So um, it's quite quite easy. We just do um, a PLT and we just do plot and we refer to position. So this is our, if I can spell more coffee, more good stuff. And here you see it's going up, up, up and actually you have quite a few big drops. Yeah. So this is actually when you have to get more cash in, into the game. Let's now just uh, tidy this up. It would be good to write everything into a function. And now I pass in my parameters. We have the money, which I pass in. I don't want to um, have a default setting for this. Um, games, I can specify a default simply using equal to. So if I, if I don't specify it, it will just use the default. And then we have our initial bet. Again, we can do a default default setting. Of course, now you see position isn't defined because I'm inside the functions. If you run this, it wouldn't know what position is. So I have to call the function um, and I assign position accordingly. Of course, again, we have missed something because at the moment um, nothing is returned. It would be just num turn value is position. Oh, and now we have a nice error message. Index 101 is out of bounds for access zero with size one. Now that, um, of course, um, can happen if you survive for longer than expected. So basically, if you really play the hundred games, but it would be reasonable simply to limit our index to the index we could handle. So we could do something like the following. We add um, an end statement in our while loop and we just say as long as um, IDX is less than the number of games I'll play. Let's have a look and that looks decent. So we run up to we try it 100 times. Does it pay off to double your bet after a loss? Can you um, survive in the long term? The answer is it will depend on your money, initial money and how many games you play. So are you running out of luck at one point? Um, and well, at one point, yes, you might actually. But of course, we don't um, preserve the random seed. Yeah, so um, um, that's, uh, that's of course something to consider. But yeah, eventually you run out of luck. Good, I see you in the next one. And as always, have some more coffee.